All right, we're back again with another mass extinction in the history of our planet. This time, one that arguably paved the way for the most iconic extinct animals in the minds of us humans, the Triassic Extinction, which took place about 200 million years ago. While the players that were impacted are somewhat different from life we know today, studying mass extinctions like these allow us to learn how our world got the way it is now and where it's headed. So before we get into it, let's go over the quick facts once again. Extinction is expected since our planet is always changing. It's a normal aspect of the history of life on Earth. But a mass extinction is different. Big changes cause tons of species to disappear, and this fundamentally changes the way the planet looks and operates. Right now, rates of extinction are so high that we might be on the verge of a modern mass extinction. Experts predict that if this trend continues, we could lose up to 50% of all species on Earth by 2050. So, it's time to look at the mass extinctions of our past. Throughout Earth's history, there are five famous mass extinction events the big five. In each one, more than 70% of life on Earth died out. In this series, we're exploring the causes and effects of the big five, one by one, to lay out what we know about mass extinctions of the past so we can prevent another one. And today our focus is the first mass extinction of the age of reptiles, the Triassic extinction. If you're a dinosaur fan, you probably already know that the Triassic is the first period of the Mesozoic era, also known as the Age of Reptiles. The Triassic lasted from about 252 to 201 million years ago. At the beginning of the Triassic, almost all of Earth's land masses were still joined together in the supercontinent Pangaea. But as the period went on, Pangaea broke apart. Remember that? It's gonna be important later. Life in the Triassic got off to a really rough start. This period begins just after the worst mass extinction of all time at the end of the Permian. Go check it out if you didn't see the last episode. After the Great dying, it took a while for ecosystems to recover. But once they did, the age of reptiles began. Fossils from this time include the earliest known turtles and ancient relatives of lizards, plus a lot of reptilian oddballs like the gliding Chirovipteryx and the long-necked Tanistrophius. There was also a wide variety of crocodilian cousins called Pseudosuchians. These included armored Edosaurs, predatory Rawisuchians, and the very crocodile-shaped Phytosaurs. The Triassic also features the first flying reptiles, with early pterosaurs like Eudomorphodon, and the first dinosaurs, including big herbivores like Platyosaurus, and early predators like Coelophysis. Meanwhile, a group called Therapsids included tusked Dicynodons, Lystrosaurus, and little mousy creatures like Morganucodon. During the Triassic, this group gave rise to the first mammals, our tiny, fuzzy ancestors. The landscape at the time was full of forests and swamps and other habitats, which were home to ferns and conifers, big amphibian temnospondyls, ancient and etc. In the oceans, there were lots of bivalves, plankton, sharks, and other groups that had made it through the Permian extinction. They were joined by newcomers like the first Loractinian corals, which are the corals we have today, as well as marine reptiles like the fish-shaped ichthyosaurs. During the Triassic, some ichthyosaurs like Shonisaurus grew over 60 feet long, making them some of the largest animals of the time. You might think that just after the worst mass extinction of all time at the end of the Permian, life on Earth might get a little break for a while. But no. At the end of the Triassic period, only 50 million years after the last catastrophe, ecosystems were shattered again. Fossil evidence suggests that about 75% of the world's species disappeared, with huh? major losses on land and in the oceans. We have a lot of information about this extinction because there's lots of great fossil sites from the late Triassic. There were lots of thriving forests and swamps and ocean habitats that left behind abundant deposits of rocks like coal and limestone that are rich in fossil shells, bones, teeth, spores, and pollen. In these records, we see multiple pulses of extinction, and preserved minerals show multiple major shifts in their carbon composition. The scientists call these carbon isotope excursions, and they basically mean that the Earth's carbon cycle was radically disrupted over and over. The chemistry of late Triassic rocks and fossils fluctuates widely, reflecting repeated changes in environmental conditions like temperature and water chemistry. Habitats all over the world had become unstable, and ecosystems couldn't adapt fast enough to survive. Unstable conditions are really bad news for sensitive species like plants and plankton. And since those organisms are at the base of most food webs, it's also bad news for everyone else. Those extinctions in the fossil record happened when ecosystems around the world collapsed. As always, massive changes to Earth's systems don't happen for no reason. In this case, late Triassic environments were in chaos because the world was falling apart, literally. During the Triassic, tectonic forces were splitting Pangaea down the middle, separating east and west. This gradually opened up the central Atlantic Ocean. Hooray! But as the Earth's crust stretched and thinned, it loosened the pressure of the magma below. That magma rose up and formed lots and lots of volcanoes. Volcanoes spew out lava, which cools into solid rock. 
and becomes part of the geologic record. Volcanic rocks from the end of the Triassic period are all over the place, with massive deposits in Africa, Europe, South America, and North America. Geologists estimate that these lava flows covered approximately 4 million square miles across the center of Pangaea. Altogether, these rocks are known as the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province, or CAMP. Radiometric dating using uranium in these rocks shows that these eruptions went on for more than 600,000 years. So this was a tumultuous time. The continent was being torn apart. Ocean currents were being redirected as the land masses moved around. And a huge portion of the globe was being flooded with lava. And on top of all of that, those volcanoes were releasing tons of gases. If you've been following this video series so far, you know what's going on. Volcanoes produce sulfurous gases and other chemicals that can be toxic to nearby ecosystems. When those gases get into the atmosphere, they undergo chemical reactions that create acid rain, which can be damaging to ecosystems that it lands on. Volcanoes also release carbon dioxide, which is a, yes, greenhouse gas, traps heat in the atmosphere. As volcanoes spit up CO2 for hundreds of thousands of years, the Earth's climate became warmer. Warming temperatures alter certain chemical reactions that form minerals in rocks and shells. By examining the fluctuating mineral chemistry of the late Triassic, geologists have identified multiple episodes of global temperatures warming by several degrees Celsius. CO2 in the atmosphere also seeps into the oceans, where it forms carbonic acid and disrupts the shells and skeletons of marine animals. And with all of this change going on in the oceans, the water chemistry, the temperature, the actual shape of the seas as the continents split apart, patterns of currents and water circulation change too. And that interrupts the flow of nutrients and gases across ocean habitats. This meant that some areas were left without enough food, some waters ended up without enough oxygen. The chemical changes we see in the late Triassic rocks are the result of all these fluctuations in temperatures, water chemistry, and volcanic byproducts. The extinctions in the late Triassic fossil record happened because life across the ocean was starving and suffocating. The extinctions started in coastal ecosystems, closer to the source of all the problems, and then gradually spread out to the open oceans. At the same time on land, temperature fluctuations, acid rain, deadly substances spilling out of volcanoes cause forests and other ecosystems to fall apart. In the fossil record, large plants like trees disappear almost completely. This collapse of vegetation would have destroyed entire biomes. By the time the Triassic period ended, the breakup of Pangaea was well underway, and our modern continents were beginning to take shape, but about 75% of species weren't around to enjoy it. In the ocean, there were major losses among groups like plankton, fish, and the spiral shell ammonites. Those Sleractinian corals, which had just gotten started in the Triassic seas, were devastated and almost wiped out entirely. The fish-shaped ichthyosaurs, which were some of the most successful marine reptiles of the time, got really hit hard, and they never regained their former diversity. On land, loads of plants went extinct. In the fossil record, more than 95% of large plant species disappear. Most of the amphibian temnospondyls go extinct, and so do most of the Pseudosuchian crocodile relatives and most of the therapsids, cousins of the first mammals. Among the survivors were some famous groups. Some early mammals managed to make it through, and so did some of the flying pterosaurs and the early dinosaurs. Exactly why these species survived while others didn't isn't fully understood. It could be that there was something about the behavior or the anatomy of these animals that helped them survive the environmental chaos. Or maybe the survivors were just the ones that got lucky. It was probably a little bit of both. As the Triassic period ended, the Jurassic period began. A mass extinction leaves lots of empty space and ecosystems that new groups can eventually fill. In the oceans, mollusks like clams and snails took over where ancient groups like brachiopods had once thrived. And more marine reptiles like plesiosaurs spread through the seas. Pterosaurs filled the skies. And on land, with so many of those Triassic animals gone forever, dinosaurs finally took over. From there, the age of dinosaurs lasted for more than a hundred million more years. Until the next mass extinction. This is the fourth episode in a six-part series on mass extinctions. Make sure to follow Colossal's YouTube channel for the next episode, where we're gonna visit the extinction that ended the age of the dinosaurs, the Cretaceous mass extinction. See ya!